In this video, we look at how to convert an equation that's in polar form to one that is in rectangular form. We're probably less familiar with equations in polar form, and so the first example we have here, r equals 4 secant of theta, that actually might be a really familiar graph to us, but we're just not used to it being written in polar form. So, how do we do this? Well, we have to make use of these identities up here. All right, these allow us to make certain substitutions, um, certain substitutions that will allow us to replace thetas and r's with x's and y's. So first, let's note that in the first example, r equals 4 secant of theta. Um, none of my identities have a secant in it, but if you really just rewrite secant as 4 times 1 over a cosine of theta, Now we at least have a cosine in the game. And what you can do is, since we have the cosine next to the r, if we could only get that r next to the cosine, we could just replace that with an x. Um, well, we can just by multiplying both sides by cosine of theta. And so that means these divide, and I've gotten that r times cosine of theta is equal to 4. <clears throat> and uh, r cosine of theta we know is x, so I'll just replace that with an x. And so there it is. Now the equation is in rectangular form. And so we also have to identify the graph. Uh, this equation, x equals 4, is just a vertical line. Right? It's a line in which the x-coordinate is always 4. So this is a vertical line. So let's take a second and just put it in the calculator to see what we get. So make sure you're in radian mode and polar mode. So select radian and polar, <clears throat> and then go to y equals, and we're going to punch in r1 equals, and we're going to type in 4 divided by cosine of theta. Okay, to, I mean, we don't have a secant button, but 4 secant of theta is the same as 4 divided by cosine of theta. Let's go to our window. Let's make our theta min and theta max. Let's just go negative 2 pi to 2 pi. And let's do um, our theta step. If you just want that to be somewhat small, maybe 0.1 would be good enough. And let's make our window negative 8 to 8 for x and y. And then hit graph. <clears throat> and you'll sh uh, see, sure enough, that we've got a vertical line whose equation is x equal to 4. So, um, and that, notice this is actually something you can't graph in function mode because x equals 4 is not a function, right? It, it doesn't pass the vertical line test because it is a vertical line. All right, so again, we make use of these identities here to convert from polar to rectangular. Let's look at the second example. I've got r equal to 2 sine of theta minus 4 cosine of theta. So this time, actually, let's let's put in the calculator first, since we've got it out. R1 equals 2 sine of theta minus 4 cosine of theta. And I'm going to keep my window. I think that should be fine. I hit graph. Now, I don't know about you, but on my calculator, it looks like it's an ellipse, but it actually is a circle um, if you... If you zoom in a little bit on the, you know, right on where the circle is, let's make, make our window negative, maybe negative uh, 5 to 1 for x. And for y, negative, maybe negative 4 to 4, or to 5, maybe. So, I mean, again, it still looks like an ellipse, but uh, it really should be a circle. The reason it looks like an ellipse is because on your calculator, the the scaling is um, the scaling is a little bit off on the x-axis and the y-axis. They're, they're not the same width. So, in any event, it is a circle. You'll notice its center looks like it's at negative 2, 1, I would say. 
So whatever, when we convert this to a rectangular form, it should be a circle. It should be in the form of a circle whose center is negative 4, 1. And it looks like the radius is, if I were to guess, the radius may be 2. So I guess we'll see that in a second. Um, <clears throat> so how do I can do this conversion? Well, first of all, I've got a sine theta and a cosine theta, and that's good. All I need next to them are r's, right? There are no r's next to, you know, in between the 2 and the sine and the 4 and the cosine. So how do I get an r to be there? Because, again, we want to replace those expressions with x's and y's. Uh, how about just multiply both sides by r? So I'm going to multiply this side by r and this side by r. And so the right, the left side is r squared. And on the right side, if I distribute, I'm going to put that r on the right side. I'm going to distribute to both pieces, and I'm going to put it in between the 2 <clears throat> and the s, and in between the 4 and the c, so that it looks like this. 2 r sine theta minus 4 r cosine theta. <clears throat> now I actually have some substitutions I can make because r squared, if you look up your identity, that's the same as x squared plus y squared. And r sine theta is just x. So this is 2x. And 4 cosine of theta is, uh, actually not 4 cosine of theta, r cosine of theta is y. Oops, I made a mistake. r sine theta is y. Sorry about that. And r cosine theta is x, so it's minus 4x. So, <clears throat> we're not done. We kind of have to make this look a little bit better. So we're going to get everything on one side. And then add the 4x to both sides. And I'm going to subtract 2y from both sides. And so then this becomes x squared plus 4x, and I'm going to leave a space here, and then I'm going to write plus y squared minus 2y, and on the right hand side this equals when I have a 0. Now, we're going to do something called completing the square here, because what we want is, to put this in the standard form of a circle, we need this to look like x plus or minus something squared plus y plus or minus something squared. That's the standard form of a circle equals and then we'll need a we'll have a, a number on the, the right hand side here so that it'll be in the, the form of a circle where you can see the radius and the center. And so the way to do that is to take half of this 4, for instance, half of this 4, so half of 4 is 2, so this will turn into x plus 2 squared. But in order to make that happen, I'm going to take that 2 and square it. So when you square that 2, it becomes a 4. So if I add 4 here, I'll have gotten what I want. <clears throat> now you can't just add 4 to an equation without balancing. So I'm going to add 4 to this side too, plus 4. Now it's balanced. Similarly, I'm going to take half of negative 2, and that becomes a negative 1. And I'm going to square negative 1, and that's a plus 1, and I add that here. But again, i got to balance, so I put it here. And now what you see is I have done what's called completing the square, and here is my final representation. So that is a circle. That's a circle, you can see, with a center. Center is equal to negative 2, positive 1. And the radius is equal to the square root of 5, right? Because that's r squared here. This is r squared. 
<clears throat> so in any event, it agrees with what we saw when we graphed it in polar form. So this turns out is the way circles generally look in polar form, which again, of course, is not too familiar with familiar to us, but that's only because we don't graph in polar form too often. So hopefully this gave you some strategies for converting from polar to rectangular form.